The learning objectives of this module are to know the indications and contraindications for a feeding tube, potential complications to look for during and after placement, and to learn how to place a nasogastric or orogastric tube. A gastric tube is a single lumen synthetic tube that is passed from either the nose, a nasogastric tube, or the mouth, orogastric tube, into the stomach. It is incrementally marked in centimetres and is radio-opaque to allow easy visualisation during radiography. Indications for a nasogastric or orogastric tube may include infants who are unable to take milk by the oral route due to prematurity, feeding immaturity or neurological disease with poor oromotor skills, infants who have respiratory distress with tachypnea or those who require assisted ventilation. Once placed, the gastric tube can be used to provide enteral feeding or medication and for checking the stomach contents for either pH or volume and content of gastric residuals. The nasogastric or orogastric tube can be used for venting or gravity drainage of the stomach. Special double lumen gastric tubes with multiple distal side holes attached to intermittent or continuous wall suction can be used for decompressing the stomach in cases of anatomical or functional gastrointestinal obstruction. Contraindications in naso- or orogastric feeding may include congenital abnormalities such as esophageal atresia, where the proximal esophagus ends as a blind pouch, or esophageal perforation. Complications of the procedure may include apnea, bradycardia, or desaturation, irritation of the nasal mucosa, perforation of the pharyngeal, esophageal, or gastric mucosa, displacement due to loss of adhesiveness of tape due to secretions or the infant pulling out their own tube, and increased gastroesophageal reflux. The infant is monitored throughout the procedure for respiratory distress or bradycardia. You should not push against any resistance, and you should stop the procedure any time if there is coughing, gagging, apnea, bradycardia, respiratory distress or cyanosis. Placement can be confirmed by a combination of measures, which may include aspirating stomach contents, the presence of acidic pH of less than 5 in the stomach, assuming that the infant is not being treated with antacids, auscultating over the stomach while injecting 1 ml of air into the stomach with a syringe, or abdominal x-ray. Your feeding tube is now ready for use. The following section outlines the equipment currently being used at one of our NICUs to place a nasogastric or orogastric tube in a preterm infant. You should follow your own institution's guidelines. You will need the following pieces of equipment. Sterile field. Not sterile, it's just a clean procedure field. Take it down to secure the tube, lubricant for the tube, preferably water soluble. We're going to use a five French feeding tube for this baby. a syringe to check for air placement once the tube is in, so attach a 3cc syringe to the end of your tube and trim your tegoderm as you would need to secure the tube, generally about 1 to 2 centimeters wide, should be more than enough to hold it in place. Alright, so we're going to put a new orogastric tube in our little friend here. Um, he pulled his out. So there are three methods. We're going to use a six French. There are three me methods to measure. 
One is the nose to the earlobe to the xiphoid process, nose to earlobe to umbilicus, and nose to earlobe to the midpoint process between xiphoid and umbilicus. We're going to be using the third measurement, which is the edge of the nose. He's going to try to help me. To the earlobe, which for him is six. All right. It's the midpoint between the xiphoid and the umbilicus. So the xiphoid on him is 15. The umbilicus is 21. So we're going to go to 18. Okay. So when you're placing the tube, it's much easier if you're not fighting the infant and you wait for them to open their mouth a little. And you're going to slide it in above the tongue, across the palate to the oropharynx. It should go down very easily into the esophagus. You should not meet any resistance. If you meet resistance, stop and start over. So this is going down very easily, and we are at 18 at the lip. Tubes can be secured in a variety of ways. We tend to use duoderm on the chin to protect the skin and then we use Tegaderm over it to secure it in place. You want to double check your measurement before you put your Tegaderm on, so we're 18 at the lip. I know, buddy. And we're gonna secure the tube. And he doesn't seem to be too bothered by this. He is trying to help me. Once your tube is in place, you want to try to aspirate some gastric contents. If your baby's on CPAP or non-invasive ventilation, you will get quite a bit of air out of the stomach. In this one, you can see the gastric contents coming up through the tube. Um, you can check placement in a couple of ways. The way that we use is auscultation. It can also be checked with pH. Um, with pH, you want to be careful if you're using any kind of um, H2 blockers or proton pump inhibitors because it will alter your pH. So we're going to inject two cc's of air into the stomach and listen for placement. You'll hear a pretty loud bubbling. And his tube is in place, so now it's ready to be used.